your pilot is not screaming anything at the enemy as I'm rushing forward trying to blade them, but I certainly might be. And I would hate to be, you know, the person living in the apartment when a foot flies through my window and kills my whole family because this robot's trying to get higher. The ship's approaching Rubicon. Wake up the dogs. Establishing cerebral coral connection. Link verified. Hey there, pilots. This is Noisy Wren, transmitting the Rubicon Dogs podcast from uh, somewhere out among the stars, bringing you all the armored core data you need to survive the battlefield. Let's get to it. Just a quick reminder that this is part two of episode seven, and we really just pick up right where we left off So if you haven't already listened to episode 7, I would pause this, listen to that, and then come back. With that being said, we're just going to jump right back into it, right where we left off. With the murdering of a royal family. And I think that, you know, I've mentioned it before, I think that's one of the nice things about AC and really fun software games in general is, yeah, you can just go in, complete your mission, earn your points, buy a bunch of parts, blow crap up, like, whatever. Or you can really read through stuff and dig into the lore that's there, but it's very much under the surface. Yeah, I I love how the the lore and story are opt in. Like if you're not interested in it, then the game recognizes that and doesn't give it to you. But if you are interested in it, it it's there for those who are hungry for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see, we'll wrap a couple together. Red and blue color schemes, especially with white upper limbs and gold detailing. We, of course, I think get that just a little bit, just in the coloration of some of the ACs, but it isn't like it's this big heroic thing. Um, and I think that's why they bring it up is red and blue, probably more so in the U.S., um, or these, like, patriotic, heroic colors, right? Very, very main character energy. Yeah, I mean, all... Well, not I, I'm not going to say all, but m- many of the Gundams are colored in this way. Yeah, that um, is true. And in Armored Core, like I think Celebrity Ash kind of fits this. Um, yeah, yeah, I think there's a there's a few, but even then, Armored Cores tend to be uh, minus the ones you make yourself. All the enemy ACs tend to be colored the same throughout their whole AC. Like very rarely will you see one that has the like white upper and lower limbs with a blue and gold chest and and something that's very Gundam esque. I think we have a couple of instances of it. Or they might have um oh I can't think of his name. He's in four A. He's got the white and black AC that's kind of half and half. Oh you're talking about the architect, aren't you? There's an architect who decided to, he left one of the corporations. I do know who you're talking about, but again, it's it's he's not a hero, unfortunately. He's just one of these side characters, which is interesting, but nothing majorly links to him. Yep. And um, they talk about wing like protrusions on the side of its helmet, um, or its head. Eh, stabilizers to some extent, but nothing really like Gundam esque in that regard. Um, a chest plate in the shape of an inverted triangle or an animal's head. Maybe you could say like White Glint's core um, or the core in, uh, what is it, Armored Core 2, the the one on the front cover, I forget the name of it. Um, but they do have a little bit of that like pointy triangle feel to them. But again, not in the same way that you see it just as a repeating theme in Gundam. Yeah, for sure. I I thought of the, the lay here core from Mm. or answer where it's very triangular it's almost like pyramidal because you have that point that projects out from the chest yeah um, yeah but yeah it's not i i don't think it's really the same as the context of the rest of these bullet points that we're looking at yeah they do talk about a retractable mask that covers its mouth and or a removable helmet um I brought up the the eye cover that we see in the AC6 trailer. Um, So we do see he piles them and then this eye cover sort of flips down over his AC, um, which I thought might be like scan mode, right? So you're in scan mode and then you're, oh, combat mode and it flips down over you. But we know that scan mode is not a thing in AC6. Yeah, the uh, recent interview, I think, suggested it's a function rather than a, a mode. 
So yeah, yeah, it's it'll be interesting to see. I, that could have just been a cinematic thing in the trailer. I, I think it was part of the reveal trailer that was more cinematic than the gameplay one. But yeah, I don't expect it'll actually have any kind of big gameplay, you know, mechanics there. But just a little interesting tidbit. Um, let's see, all the robots in the show, whether or not they're mass manufactured, are unique designs based on some kind of common theme. Um, yeah, I mean, we get various corporations tend to lean into specific designs, um, and depending on what game you're playing, you could maybe consider them somewhat mass manufactured. Yeah, it's more MTs that fall into mass production sort of thing, and, and they do all have their own styles, you know, there's um, BFS, which was very much um, style and quality before it was taken over by GA, and now GA focuses on just getting it cheap, effective, and that's it. So there, there is different styles out there. There's mm -hmm. sleek design. Obviously, Ray Leonard is basically like the Rolls Royce of next. Everything is beautifully shined and cheeky, and <laughs> yeah. everything you could basically wipe it with a cloth and it would shine back at you. Yeah, and you know, I think you see that just in the what the companies specialize in too, right? So a lot of your energy manufacturers, yeah, it's very round, it's very sleek. Um, and then you have more of your tanks and like you said, your your budget friendly options, right? So it's just made to be high defense, get the job done. It's not necessarily pretty. So you see recurring themes, I think, that ties in to the companies themselves and what they manufacture and make and maybe a little bit into the lore there is the only kind of reoccurring theme I would say that you see. Yeah, as you say, it's more GA's famous for um, creating necks for low AMS pilots, which use weapon arms. So that's very much a GA sort of trait there. Man, I hope we get weapon arms. Would be cool. <laughs> it would. Um, and I think that's really all that I had notes on. Is there any bullet points that you guys wanted to go over that maybe I missed or didn't touch on? Uh, no, I think the rest of these don't really apply to, to Armored Core. Um, they're more of anime, anime things, but, um, yeah. And even then a lot of them, um, even Gundam wise, a lot of them don't even necessarily touch on Gundam. Yeah, for sure. So now that we've gone through the checklist and chatted about a lot of stuff, how are you guys feeling on the real robot versus super robot aspects of, um, well, really both Gundam and Armored Core, but I guess more so Armored Core specifically. I'm still definitely in the camp that Armored Core falls into the real robot genre as opposed to the super robot. Though obviously there's a couple of threads that, that cross it over. Um, and even Gundam, even though, like you said, it's, I think it leans more into the real robot with just a couple of aspects that lean more into the super robot. And even compared to FromSoft older games, you know, Dark Souls and Elden Ring and things like that, I think the way that Armored Core sets up its world at least semi based in realism leaves um makes it harder for them to pull in any of those super fantastical elements you know you're probably not going to get bosses uh, you know screaming and transforming um and getting more powerful just out of like sheer rage or willpower or anything like that yeah for sure i i think that armored core traditionally is very real robot and I think over the years, especially with fourth gen, there's been more of a departure towards that super robot fantasy in some ways. Like on this checklist, I think it prefaces the checklist that the curve is exponential. So like the more items you check on the list, the more exponentially your chances are of being a super robot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it's power curve of, you, you know, you already defeated this like big powerful enemy and the ability to do that has already sort of been explained. So where do you go from there without, yeah, leaning more and more into the super robot category? Yeah. And so like with the earlier games that were, they definitely had more of that grounded, I'm piloting a huge mech with all of the realistic and mechanical implications of that such as slow movement and turning mm -hmm. and terrible aiming and all this stuff um as the franchise has persisted on almost out of necessity um to keep the franchise fresh but also to modernize it and make it more accessible we've gotten to a place where things are definitely 
feeling more super robot the there's still grounded in that realism and i think we're going to see that continue to change with armored core 6 based on what we've seen so far in the gameplay stuff yeah in regards to the the franchise as a whole i think it's there's a couple of interesting points in regards to that and fourth gen i feel like is really where we tipped more into that super robot right so things got really floaty they got really fast paced um and i think that they actually recognized that and they tried to dial it back in five five was a lot more gritty a lot heavier you couldn't just fly up into the air freely albeit i don't see giant robots you know kicking their way up walls mega man style is necessarily a realistic thing and i would hate to be you know the person living in the apartment when a foot flies through my window and kills my whole family because this robot's trying to get higher Um, (laughs) but i think overall it felt like they were trying to dial back the super aspects and make it heavier and more um i don't know just more realistic in general I'd agree with you on that one. I think fourth gen was this real shift towards this super robot idea, these amazing speeds, these fantastical things. And five was very much, we'll dial it back a bit. Um, you can be very much ground based. You can jump up and down. Yeah, but it, it really is. It's based more realistic. I'm going to say a push, but because it's not totally realistic. I'm sure we can point hundreds of flaws out in the mechanical yeah. design of how these things wouldn't be able to carry all this happens but it it was more realistic than four <laughs> yeah 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 for, for sure. sure yeah and i think that's kind of why ac6 seems like it's going back to more of that super fantasy a little bit because we can we can see how the games did right i mean yeah yeah people, that's true. And I... pe- people love four and four answers specifically for answer um and like five and verdict day just did not do well and even though those games play a lot similar to the earlier games that compared to like four answer like it's just not viable for the company to keep you know putting out design like that when people are obviously here for the (laughs) the super robot stuff yes (laughs) Yeah, and even though I believe Armored Core 5 and Verdict Day's sales numbers are technically higher than 4 and 4A's, the general consensus in the community seems to lean towards 4 Answer, and I think the sales numbers might also be just that it was many years later, um, and so more people have game systems, games are coming more to the forefront, just they're selling more in general. So I don't know if it's a, an entirely fair comparison or not. But 4A does seem to be the favorite, I would say. Yeah, and, and 6 is an interesting in that you get all of these kind of quality of life improvements, obviously a lot of the speed and, and aspects of 4, but it does also feel like they're kind of going back to that like second and third generation in a lot of ways too. So it's it's interesting. They're trying to maybe still somewhat keep it under control and not let that curve really happen but like you said you know you have to to cater to what the fan base wants and clearly four was the favorite between the two yeah i mean did you have any real thoughts on that acl no i it's you were quite right there you are going you're going back there was as you say armored core 4 was very open space there weren't many things in buildings in armored core 6 we've gone back into buildings there's walls there's things so we're we're harking back to the old a Age of Armor Core, I hate to say that, you know, you're in buildings, there wasn't much room to fly about, but we're also keeping some aspects of the super robot fantasy with these great bouncing pads that bounce you high above the air, and you know, otherwise you'd have to stand and wait on a lift while your operator yelled at you to go, go fast, and you're like, I can't go any faster, I'm on a lift. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I think the series, it's, it's interesting, and it shares... Uh, I guess an aspect I would say with Monster Hunter in this regard and that every generation they just restart the storyline and they give you new mechanics and change things um, you know a lot of the times in a very major way Um, and it's it's nice in the regards that they can just say like oh five didn't work let's just scrap the whole thing um, and start with something new they don't have to keep this kind of thread running through that explains you know why the technology shifted in this direction or the other um, so it's a lot of freedom in that regards, but I feel like at the same time, they shouldn't have named it Armored Core 6. Um, I, I think they should have just restarted it with Armored Core 
something something, you know, it's its own unnumbered exclusive title. Yeah, I I don't know. That may have uh, that's interesting because in all of the interviews, the FromSoft staff have made it very clear that this is a new, fresh, clean slate for Armored Core. And I know that they have to continually keep saying that because they, well, they want to bring in new fans. And and a lot of people will be gatekept by the fact that there's 15 games that they haven't played. Yeah. And so he should have just called it Armored Core 15. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I, I, I definitely think they would have saved themselves a lot of work by not calling it Armored Core 6 um, because yeah. then it would have been more apparent. Because, I mean, the casual person who's like, oh, that Armored Core looks good. It's Armored Core 6. I haven't played the first five. Yeah. Again, this game isn't for me. That That's not the person that's going to be going and looking for interviews for from yeah. Scott to confirm that yeah, exactly. they're going to yeah. be fine playing this. So, Yeah, I don't know if, it's, if they did it to... I don't know, because, like, yeah, it's calling, I guess, to the old old fan base right but it isn't like we weren't going to look into it and play it regardless and we're like oh it's number six like even if it was just called armored core fires of rubicon you know the the old school fan base and vets would have been all over it and so i I don't know why they kept it as a numbered title i just feel it might have been the same as when they rebooted um tomb raider she was a completely new character completely new backstory and you know it did put some of the old is off because they wanted uh tomb raider whatever number it was maybe that's what they were going with i yeah i'm not sure i mean it does pull the duty of reassuring the prior fans that this is still an armored core game like i know there's been a lot of controversy about whether or not this is even going to feel like armored core anymore but Mm -hmm. i mean the staff have made it very clear that this is still an armored core game it's still titled like an armored core game. And so I it's they're definitely in a tricky spot where they want to appeal to longtime fans of the franchise because those are the fans that have supported them through their foundational years, right? And this is a franchise that really kind of put them on the map and got them to a place where they could design Demon Souls and work up yeah. Golden Ring. So, in that regard of oh go ahead. Oh yeah. So I was gonna say they're in love with it. And I don't think they want it to change that much. You know, with Armored Core 4 Answer, it it did change a lot. And we saw them dial it back some in 5. And I think they're still trying to find their middle ground between, well, because it's a negotiation, right, between modern gameplay, the the expectations of modern game consumers the technology, the fantasy that they want to get across and like certain other hard lines I'm sure that they have that uh, kind of bound the franchise in, into what it is. Um, you know, they they could make a Gundam game. You know, we, we saw Damon X Machina and how that plays totally different from Armored Core. And yeah, so yeah they, it's interesting. That's yeah. Damon's the obvious comparison, I feel like, of recent games to Armored Core. But yeah, just despite all of these overlapping mechanics, it just does not feel the same. Right. And and so they I feel like they have a very they know the identity of Armored Core very clearly. They have a clear understanding of what the franchise is at its core and identity. And it's I mean, it's like with any art, right? You can have this perfect idea of what you want the thing to be but you know the work is getting it there yeah yeah and i think that's one thing that really gives me hope for for armored core 6 and that of course you know a lot of the fan bases are are up in arms about how it's not an armored core game it's a souls like they're going away from you know what armored core should be Um, but like you said i think they have a really firm grasp on what at its core, Armored Core is, and even the games, you know, moving from three to four into five, even though they've played very differently, all of them very much felt like an Armored Core game. And then you get into something like Damon X Machina, which, you know, objectively has a whole lot of elements 
to it that, you know, overlap with especially fourth generation, I would say, but it just doesn't. It doesn't really feel like an armored core game and it doesn't scratch that same itch. So I think they, I think they know they have that, that base core concept of what the series is and should feel like. And I don't think they're going to mess that one up in six. No, as you said, I, I, they know the spirit of what thing we need. And we may not get exactly what the thing, but as people have said, it's been years, nearly 10 years since the last game. We're going to have to advance. We're not the same players we were 10 years ago. You know, mm. we've got a new community. We've got new people coming in and gaming's changed a lot since then. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's what I was saying too on, I think it was maybe my last podcast episode that, you know, the vast majority of the fan base right now is coming from the souls franchise. You know, I'm sure it's probably upwards of, you know, 80 or 90% of the people coming into AC six are either totally new to it or coming from souls games. Um, and so I think to some extent they have to cater to that. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I, I mean, some of the changes, regardless of whether or not they feel like traditional armored core, they're going to be good. I mean, I, I yeah. was playing, uh for answer yesterday and i was just wishing and hoping for checkpoints on some of those missions where <laughs> you know like it's me and old king fighting four acs and i've got to grind through this fight six or seven times to get the win and i don't want to sit through the whole you know prologue animation and, and all this stuff you know yeah six or seven times and you know if this game is harder you know the bosses are harder and you're looking at closer to 20 to 40 attempts to kill some of them checkpoint people are going to be glad there's checkpoints oh yeah for sure especially if your mission is you know like an hour too long because even during the the japanese interview um with game informer they were talking about how they spent two hours there and they saw you know the intro tutorial and then one mission yeah, well, when you talk like that, you can understand where you need um, health packs, medical packs from. If these games are longer, then, you know, you're not really going to ask that. Some of the missions in Armored Core really did put you on the strain. I know Last Raven was of quite a little level with that. Sometimes you'd end up with 2,000 armored points going into a fight against Zenaid, and you're like, well, this is going to be fun. Yeah, and they just, like, turn and shoot you, and you just explode and die. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah and so, that's one oh go ahead oh yeah i, I was just gonna say the from a game design standpoint the repair kits do make a lot of sense i'm not in love with the fantasy behind it but we'll just have to see what what lore they develop around that technology yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah sure I'm sure they will explain it but i'm curious how they explain it because yeah like you said i think I, I'm certainly not in love with it. I see why you have it from a gameplay perspective, especially if your bosses, um, like the smart cleaner, they said two shot them. So especially if you have these wildly powerful bosses and you want these big epic fights, um, I get why it's there without any kind of explanation. Um, I, I don't love that it just heals immediately. I think they could have done a like, oh, you know, you have little micro like repair bots that you can release out of your core or whatever that you know gradually repair you i think going the route of a even if it was like five or ten seconds a kind of flask route of this gradual heal makes more sense in my head but again i don't know how they explain the repair it's a shame they didn't do what they did in armored core 5 which i believe I remember it was you called in your repairs from a helicopter it was certain spots there to be no enemies around yeah the helicopter would come down it would repair you it would give you all your ammo back. Is it realistic? Probably not. I can't imagine you'd let someone sit there and refuel and while you're chasing them. But that was that was explained away nicely, and I kind of wish they'd done that. Yeah, and I'm curious what they'll do, and maybe it'll be something similar to that with these kind of refill stations where we do get more ammo and more charges and things like that. Um, maybe there'll be some kind of grounded explanation for it all but they've been so vague on it <laughs> that it's just upsetting people instead yeah for sure they they definitely have been pretty vague about it um i kind of expect it when i first heard about these elements and hadn't fully taken in all of all of the information that we have or formulated really deep thoughts about it uh like my gut reaction was that it would be cool to have something like the 
power armor stations that are in Fallout 4, if you're familiar with that, where you can get to kind of a garage point on a map where you can go and swap out parts or something. Mm -hmm. Basically kind of similar to to what's in the fifth gen stuff where you have to you have to, you know, make a tactical retreat back from your objective to to do the refit. And um, because that would fit while that's highly gamified, it has elements of reality to it that allow you to continue to suspend your disbelief a lot more than, you know, (laughs) drinking a repair potion. (laughs) Yeah. And I, I think that's without, you know, any explanation so far, I think that's where AC six suffers and where a lot of people are having issues is AC is coming from this very grounded reality of like, okay, if you can't complete the mission, you go back to the garage to outfit your AC to change parts or in the very least you have something, you know, fly them out to you. But in this one, you you know, it seems like you just die and you pop to the assembly screen, you change out whatever you want, and you just kind of respawn into it. I'm really hoping that they put some sort of just little explanation into like how that works from a world building and then lower perspective. Yeah, I it it would be good. It would be for the benefit of a lot of more like lore nerds and pragmatic thinking people. But at the end of the day, it it is a video game. I mean, you, you know what you're getting yourself into when you yeah, play a video it, it, game. Yeah, that's true. I know I'm being nitpicky about it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I think we all are. You know, the a lot of the veteran fans because we've we've been trained to expect certain things, and yeah, uh, so it's hard. I, changes is hard to accept, right? Yeah, for sure. But I, I mean, we'll we'll get over it. You know, from soft oh, yeah. <laughs> still training us, so you know we're <laughs> we're gonna adapt and. We'll be like, oh man, this is so great. It feels good. You know, I what was yeah. I worried about? Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping all of our worries are immediately resolved and that it takes everything that we're like, oh, that's going to lower the skill cap. I think they're just going to shift that into different areas that are maybe even a little more fun than trying to maintain lock on the whole time. Um, was it you, Absurd, who recently linked to that video of the, the Japanese players just like floating above this tank with, I think it was Gatling guns, maybe? But he's so on top of it that you, you know, the tank can't do anything at all. And um, so I think yeah. lock on again sort of resolves that. Oh, no, that's the the core issue, right? Is that is part of the the skill cap, but turning speed and and things limit that. So I, I feel like a really really good lightweight player can probably outplay most heavyweights in in armored core four. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, that video wasn't mine. I'm not sure which one you referred to, but the point that you're making is definitely valid. Um, the, I was kind of talking about that a little bit yesterday when I was doing some of the Orca order matches and four answer that like some of those, some of the builds, I mean, there's definitely like a meta in armored core, even though I wasn't doing PVP or anything, Yeah, like some play styles, like I, I prefer to do more of a ground base, like close quarter skirmishing play style. and. When I'm up against a reverse leg mech that's just bunny hopping and hitting me with missiles, like it's I don't want to say it's not fun, but it's like this this guy is owning me, you know? I mean I'll yeah. still I'll still win, but I don't feel like I'm winning the fight, you know? <laughs> like their strategy and, and tactics are a lot better, you know. Um, yeah. I'm just waiting well, you, for them to mess up. So. I absolutely 100% don't see it happening. But as a just a quick aside idea I just had, how cool would it be that somebody shoots all of their missiles at you and you unhard lock on, you just move right back to the soft lock and you can soft lock onto all of the missiles with, you know, like your chain guns or something and just mow them down and blow them up midair before kind of re hard locking onto the enemy. That would be cool. I can see that more as a cutscene. I can see it more as a cutscene thing. I don't know if it's you. Ca- you could stop missiles in Armored Core for, and I think other games by having a Gatling gun and shooting them, even yeah, without like locking can, them on. Yeah, you can't. You can't lock on to them. So it'd be cool if they had just a little bit more like direction on that. Because yeah, it was more luck of the draw or like where you were pointing. But there, yeah, there's definitely been instances of like, oh, I'm going to make a missile boat and go take out this AC, but they're just holding Gatling guns on me, and so it just blows up all of my missiles before it gets to them at all. Yeah, I I'm a machine gun enjoyer, and they're <laughs> my main yeah they're my main form of missile defense, really in in armored core fourth gen at least. Um, yeah, 
you know, secondary to evasion, of course, but the, uh, it, it would be cool if they allow more, more accessibility with that kind of a, a play style, um, where it's like, you can just spend ammo to defeat your enemy's ammo. Yeah, that'd be interesting. And we don't, I, I like, I assume that we'll get some kind of anti-missile system. It's pretty much always been there, but they haven't actually confirmed anything yet on those expansion parts. But yeah, I don't know. Just an interesting little aside. Um, oh, also, my my absolute favorite is when you get those rare moments in fourth gen where you're boosting sideways and you can see a missile in your screen that's pretty much matching your pace, and you just see it like gradually catch up, or you gradually outrun it over the course of like five seconds. Oh, but it's moments like that that make um, of course, special. It's something that you remember, and yeah, I'm sure they'll be in six as well. I'm sure they'll be very close calls and these followings of missiles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, it, like you said, it's one of the things that makes Armored Core Armored Core, and I definitely love that one. Um, yeah, so kind of as we as we get to the end, you know, we've talked a lot about Gundam 2. Um, so what are your thoughts on if you like Gundam, would you like Armored Core, or vice versa? If you like Armored Core, do you think that you would like the Gundam series, um, or maybe they're not correlated at all? Because I think a lot of people coming into it come from a gamer standpoint and maybe haven't even watched any of the Gundams or watch anime at all. I think there's a lot of crossover in that that military fantasy, those really dark storylines, um, the use of you know human plus or drugs or things like that to augment your abilities. I think there's a whole lot of crossover between the two. So I'm of the a, a big proponent of if you like Armored Core, I think you would like at least some of the Gundams if not all of them, but at least some of the more grounded ones. I have to agree with you there. I'd say there is a Gundam for everyone as there is an Armored Core for everyone. You know, it's I, I personally liked all the more grounded ones, like Pocket in War and uh, all that lot. For more, That was more my style. I didn't really go for Wing. I liked all the basic ones, and it was yeah. that. that's what caught my attention for Gundam. Funny enough, Wing is the one exception to me because generally I agree with you. It's just that I saw Wing first, <laughs> and so there's like a weird nostalgic love for it. Um, but yeah, in general, I really prefer the the more grounded Gundams that don't have you know twenty funnels shooting twelve thousand lasers and just wiping out you know anything close to them. Though I do want Exceed <laughs> Orbits to come back. I will say that. Love me some Exceed Orbits. That seems to be a popular <laughs> uh, opinion. I don't think that's a hot take <laughs> exactly. Maybe they'll give them to us. But yeah, it kind of uh, in preparation for this podcast a little bit, I did ask my community if they were Gundam enjoyers or if they prefer Armored Core. And 45% of the people that answered the poll, uh, it was uh, 170 people, do say that they enjoy Gundam in addition to Armored Core. So I think that says a lot in that there there is a substantial amount of overlap uh, with the mecha community in general, but also with elements between the two different franchises. And I, I think a lot of people like me when I was young are turned off by Gundam because of the flashy anime stuff that you see. And if that is unappealing to you, it, it can just kind of turn you off to to the franchise as a whole but as you said there is a Gundam for everybody I mean I, I don't know how many series there are but it's been going for like 40 almost 50 years of oh yeah there's got to be especially between like movies and, and little short miniseries OVAs and things there's got to be at least a good like 40 plus Gundams yeah and they they have a they cover a wide spectrum of, of fantasies and um as as you can kind of tell by us going through the checklist that you know some some of those elements are the super robot elements are more heavily focused on in in certain franchises like specifically uh like fighter g like that that was just yeah. like a super super anime big fighting robot yeah um but there there is the more grounded stuff so i i think a lot of Armored Core fans that have been turned off by Gundam in the past should give it a try. I know that I was surprised myself. You know, I went into doing some of this research and and trying to analyze this whole situation very skeptical about Gundam. You know, I went in with my 
with my biases that, you know, knowing how I was turned off to Gundam when I was a kid and uh, I, I did not expect the, the depth that exists in a lot of those episodes. Yeah, I was actually super because I'm working my way through The Witch from Mercury right now, which is, uh, I think, the latest series currently. Um, and even though it, in general, it's not my favorite, it's kind of school based and, and a lot of kind of anime tropes that I don't particularly care for. Um, there's a moment where the, the your main character busts in to save her wife and just absolutely like squashes another person. There's blood all over the hand of her ace or her, her AC. Um, there's blood all over the hand of her Gundam. Um, and the person she saves is like horrified because she steps out of the cockpit after just, you know, smashing this person. There's blood all over her. Um, and she's just like smiling and, oh, I'm here to save you, which I think is usually overlooked in a lot of these style of animes and that, you know, all the, the collateral damage. Um, but in this one, they they really lean into it, which I think is nice. Um, and so it's back to that that sort of dark, gritty fantasy that I think Armored Core and Gundam share. Yeah, for sure. Gundam makes a habit of romanticizing the tech, but they never romanticize war. Yeah. It's a funny aside, and I think um, if I'm inaccurate on this at all, the Gundam community will probably jump on here and rip me apart. But between um, Gundam Wing and the movie Endless Waltz, there's a, it's like one or two mangas. It's very short. But, you know, the, the main characters, Gundam, ends up with these like big angelic wings in Endless Waltz. Um, and they, they don't really explain it in the movie, but the manga goes into it. And there's this whole thing where they see him building it. Everybody's trying to stop them because they were supposed to get rid of the Gundams because they're weapons of war. Um, and he's, you know, obviously upgrading his. And the, the whole thing is them trying to find him and stop him and figuring out, you know, why he's doing it, what he's going to do. And he just did it because he thought it was cool that it would just be <laughs> like an interesting thing to do. So how's that for your your deep explanation of just like, oh, yeah, I thought I thought these wings would be would be awesome. Yeah, it's whatever works. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think the the only kind of last bit I wanted to dive into um, is that that Gundam and series like it were really built around the toy trade and models and and selling you know models. And there's especially in Japan, you know, a massive market for any kind of Gundam related models or toys. Um, big here in the U.S. too. I think any like hobby town or model shop you go into, probably a good quarter to a third of it is is Gundam related. Um, but I think even though Armored Core has delved into it a little bit, um, and Armored Core models definitely exist, they didn't produce that many of them. There wasn't a very high variety of them. But we know that we're getting some for six. And I think, at least for the modeling community, which isn't that big, you know, maybe in the U.S., but definitely is in, in Japan, um, you know, I think it's a, a historically missed opportunity and something that would be really interesting for them to really lean more into in this one. And instead of making models, um, like before they would give you the model of, you know, either kind of the, the, your main antagonist to the game, or maybe what you see on the front cover, or maybe a specific co group or company's AC lineup. Um, it'd be cool if they moved away from that and actually moved into interchangeable parts. So you could build a model of your actual AC that you're playing in the game, I think would be awesome. Yeah, sure. Again, it comes down to money, doesn't it? Is it worth investing in it for the a profit? And that's, I think, with Gundam, you were guaranteed that you could make a model and you'd make money on it. On Armored Core, it's very much a case of, will this model sell? Mm -hmm. The White Glint model would sell out completely. But make a GA model and, mm, well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah that's true that's true yeah and i with gundam specifically gundam zeta that existed prior to the marketing of toys um which is interesting because we now know gundam as kind of a franchise that exists to sell toys uh, <laughs> but yeah. um but that's not how it started which is why i part of the reasons why i went back and watched zeta gundam just to get that that raw um that raw vision you know that was unadulterated mm. by 
capitalist intent you know, with with <laughs> selling fair. toys. I've and, never actually watched Zeta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really it's really good. Um, and so, like, one of my fears with the toy thing in Armored Core would be that you know I wouldn't want to see Armored Core become a toy selling franchise you know like how mm. star wars became one and like yeah that's fair that's a fair argument but i mean on the other hand i i want armored core fans to get all the armored core content they can get so you know if if that's your jam you know i want you to be able to have it so it, it's definitely kind of a balancing thing and what it comes down to is what acl brought up which is the the money making potential for yeah. it um, so yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, that would be really cool. Uh, especially if you could have interchangeable parts and you could kind of have your own AC garage that you could tinker with. Um, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. In my head, that'd be, that'd be awesome. And like I said, there's a, you know, a few models floating around already. Um, but yeah, I don't know if they didn't sell well or if they just only produced like a limited line of them, but you can't really get them new anymore. Um, and they're just, some of them are outrageously expensive uh, since you can't get them anymore. So I don't know. There's a, there's a market there, but how big that market is, if it's worth it, I'm not sure, but they have confirmed that they're going to produce some for AC six. And so maybe it'll be that they release, you know, one or two like starting ones from early companies and just see how it does and maybe expand from that. But yeah, I don't want it to go too far in the direction of it. You know, the series is made to sell toys instead of the other way around. Yeah, I think there's little, little potential for that, um, personally, especially because if Armored Core 6 gets to a place where it is mainstream, uh, it's, it's going, it's going to be because of the new fans coming in Yeah, and the new fans coming in are, you know, they're, they're coming in from other games, you know, they don't, some, some of them might be, you know, the hobbyist collector type. But it's there. I, I don't. I don't think most of the people coming in that are going to make Armored Core successful are going to be the fans that would make it successful in a, as a toy based franchise. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. I'd agree with that. So yeah, I don't know. Cool. We'll we'll have to wait and see. I guess like with all things, we've got yep. about a lot two, of wait and see. Two more months. So yeah, cool. Well, I think we are pretty much drawing to a close on this one unless there's anything else you wanted to cover no, uh, i think we i was gonna say it. i'll take your silence as a no yeah yeah sounds good <laughs> awesome um well thank you everybody for listening um and absurd if you want to go ahead i think you you know you called out your youtube channel but is there anything else you want to give anything you want to shout out any links you want to provide um not really i mean i i guess i'm accidentally a streamer now so you can <laughs> you can look forward to to me streaming more arm and core stuff in the future and uh in case you're interested or wondering i do plan on playing other games but like i've been waiting for this armored core game for a decade and i i'm so obsessed with it right now that it's going to be armored core content for the foreseeable future going forward but there are other things that i'm excited to try out like starfield and and some of the other titles that were released at summer games fest i don't want to get too specific and make yeah. expectations for myself or anything but yeah. yeah yeah that's fair what about you acl uh, well the only thing I'm going to plug is obviously my Discord, which was we discussed about earlier, Armored Core Law, which is a very nice place. So if you can, you can find the link in my channel community page, and I'll make sure to drop a link also um, to Rem here to make sure it gets around. And unfortunately, you're only going to get Armored Core content from me, so I'm afraid I'm not going to vary at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like Absurd said, I think all of my content for the foreseeable future will probably be armor core related i'm sure um but as i sort of run out of things to talk about and we move into more of that multiplayer setting and, and everything's been already dived into in the the world of armored core 6 i'm sure that i'll move into other games as well what those will be who knows great well thank you guys for joining me thank you for having us love to have you on again one day yeah it was really fun talking to you both and uh definitely a pleasure all right, thank you very much, Ren. Oh, looks like it's time to wrap things up. 
If you enjoyed today's broadcast, don't forget to follow, subscribe, and check out our Discord. You can find me at Noisy Rin on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. And if you want to support the podcast, you can find me at patreon.com slash noisy I appreciate the support. Coral is not cheap these days. As usual, the links are in the show notes. Till next time. Connection terminated.